Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to find one of the clearest depictions of what it means to be a Christian in all of the Bible, you'll find it in our Gospel text for today. In this moment when Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, restores the sight of a blind man. So if you want to know what it means to be saved by grace alone, to have Christ look at you, an unworthy sinner, and have mercy upon you and reward you with the ability to see the very face and the love of God. And you'll find that in the healing of this man that Mark's Gospel identifies by the name of Bartimaeus. But in order to fully understand what's happening when Jesus has mercy on this blind beggar, it helps if we take a look at the last man that Jesus has had a, has a conversation with. A man that we know simply by the title of the rich ruler. So much like the blind beggar, this rich ruler that we meet just a few verses earlier in Luke's Gospel, well, he's a man in need of mercy. There's something that's blinding him, preventing him from seeing the very face of God. There's an affliction that is preventing him from following Christ. But instead of it being physical blindness, his blindness is a spiritual one. And the thing that's blinding him, the thing that is preventing him from seeing the face of God, is this sort of mixture of his self-righteous intertwining with his love of his money. So as you may remember in this story, this rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he comes boasting of how it is that he's kept all of the commandments and asking how it is that he can inherit eternal life even though it's quite clear from the context of what he says that he's quite certain that he's done everything he needs to do to earn eternal life. But Jesus looks at him and he says, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But the man loves his stuff so much that he walks away, unwilling to part with the thing that's making him blind. And in his mind, he's basically saying, look, Jesus, I've already given God enough. I gave him my obedience. I gave him my good works. I gave him my faithfulness. I gave him a whole life devoted to doing what it is the commandments say. So if you're saying that what's blinding me from seeing God is actually the most precious thing in the world to me, the thing that I love more than anything, my possessions. If you're saying that I have to actually give those up in order to have eternal life, in order to see God, then forget it. I've already done enough. And if what I've already given God isn't good enough to see His face, then I'm not going to follow you. I'll just walk away and depart and try to find some other way to convince myself that I can make salvation happen. So here in the rich young ruler, you have a man who doesn't believe that he actually needs mercy. And because he doesn't believe that he actually needs mercy, he won't accept mercy when Christ offers it. When Jesus offers to give this man eternal riches by taking away from him the one thing that is preventing him from having the riches of God's kingdom, the man refuses because of his love of his earthly riches. But things are quite different with this blind beggar that Jesus meets just a few verses later in Luke's Gospel. So unlike the rich young ruler, Bartimaeus doesn't come boasting of his own good works. So here you have a man who wants to see the face of God, who wants to have communion with God, who wants to feel and experience and rejoice in the healing and and love of his Father. But in order to get that, he doesn't come to Jesus boasting of his good works, bragging about how well he's kept the commandments. No, when Jesus asks Bartimaeus what he wants, Bartimaeus just does what someone who believes he needs mercy does. He just asks of Jesus. He says to Jesus, Lord, let me recover my sight. No preface with this is why I deserve what I'm asking for. No words explaining how it is that this is why it is that I have earned the right to have you give me back my eyes. He just asks. And in calling Jesus the son of David prior to asking to this question, when you sort of combine these two statements of what Bartimaeus is asking and the way in which he addresses Jesus, Bartimaeus is essentially saying, look, Jesus, I know that you're not just some good teacher 
like that rich young ruler disparagingly called you, refusing to call you Lord, I know who you are. I know that you're the son of David. I know that you are the Son of God who has come into this world, that you are the promised Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah who was sent into this world precisely to give salvation to unworthy, useless, reprehensible sinners like me. So since that's what you've come to do, then do it. Since you are bearing the face of God's promised Messiah, open up my eyes so that I can actually see that face as well as the rest of God's creation. So I know that your face is the face of God. So please take away my blindness so that I can see you. And this is what the blind beggar is essentially asking, and it's why Jesus says to him, recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. Now, of course, between these two, we know which man we're supposed to be. We know that we should be the one who begs for mercy. We know that we should be Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, and that our hearts shouldn't be filled with the idolatry of this rich young ruler. And yet, even though we should ask Christ to take away the blindness of our sin that prevents us from seeing eternal life, very often we do quite the opposite. We cling to those things that make us blind, refusing to turn them over very much like that rich young ruler. So through the words of the scriptures, Christ says to us, look, if you want to see the face of God, this is the law. And the law says that you have to give me whatever is most precious in your heart. The law says that you have to be absolutely perfect and pure and holy. So if you want to see the face of God, then give me whatever is most precious in your heart. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, give me these things, that, these sins that you refuse to let go of, these things that are making you blind. Give me your anger, your hatred that you think is justified. If you want to follow me, go sell your material filth that you don't need and give it to the poor. Get rid of your lust. Get rid of your pride, your love of your reputation that you've built atop a pile of lies. All the stuff that makes you worthy only of condemnation. All of the stuff that keeps you out of my Father's kingdom. Let me have it. Let me kill it. Then come and follow me and your blindness will be gone. And you will see the face of God. But in defiance, we think to ourselves, Well, come on, Jesus. I've already done enough. I I come to church. I read my Bible. I taught my kids to pray. I I never cheated on my spouse. I haven't killed anyone. I pay my taxes. Surely that's good enough. Surely that's enough to be a good Christian who's merited eternal life. So if I have to actually be kind and loving to the people who hate me and who have made my life miserable, if just feeling bad for poor people isn't good enough, then forget it. I won't follow you and I'll just follow the idol of my heart that I gave your name, that I call by the name of Jesus. I'll worship my own version of you, the version that won't make me give up the treasures that I have in this life in order to inherit eternal life. So no, I'm not going to give up the stuff that makes me blind because I've already given you enough. But of course, you haven't given God enough. If you want to inherit eternal life, if you want to see the face of God, yes, you must keep the commandments. All of them. Entirely, perfectly, purely, inwardly and outwardly, always at every second of your existence. And that true obedience, this true keeping of the commandments that merits eternal life, well, it never once ever says, God, I've done enough, so don't make me do any more. Those aren't the words of someone who has earned eternal life. Those are the words of a blind sinner who would rather stay in condemnation than let his blindness be taken away. So what do you do when you recognize that the sinners that we are and want... uh, What do you do when you recognize that we are sinners and that we want to have our blindness taken away? What do we do when we realize that we genuinely, honestly have absolutely nothing to give God. 
What do you do when you fe- want to feast your eyes on God, but you're not holy enough to see Him? Well, you do what that blind beggar did. You trust that the Son of God, that the Son of David, has come into this world precisely to be your righteousness, to keep the commandments in your place, and to open your eyes to see the very face of God. So what do we do? We call upon the one who is in fact holy enough to see God, the one who is holy because he is God. If you want to see the face of God, and we just ask God to show us his face, to let us see what his love and his mercy look like, We ask God to see the visible image of His forgiveness set in front of us, just as He did for Bartimaeus. That's what we ask God to do, and that's precisely what it is that Christ does for us. So it's quite fitting that this is the last of Christ's healing miracles in the Gospel. Now granted, I suppose if you want to be persnickety about it, you could make the argument that uh, Jesus miraculously reattaching the ear of Malchus in the Garden of Gethsemane would be his final healing miracle, but it very much doesn't fit the rest of the sort of the categories and the specifics of your average healing miracle. But as far as your average healing miracle goes, this is the very last one that we have in the Gospels. And that's very fitting because prior to these words, prior to Jesus healing Bartimaeus, as we heard at the beginning of our Gospel text today, Jesus tells his disciples about how it is that they are now going up to Jerusalem, where it is that he's going to be betrayed and spit upon and flogged, rejected and put to death, and rise again. So here Jesus is basically saying, here I'm about to accomplish what it is that I have been sent into this world to do. And when he comes across Bartimaeus, this man who who desires mercy, it's very fitting that Jesus then opens his eyes just in time for Bartimaeus to see all of this. So here with this healing, this final healing of Christ, Jesus is basically saying to this blind beggar, you want to see. You want to gaze upon the beautiful face of God. Well, I'll show it to you. Open your eyes, come follow me to the cross, and there you'll see that beauty. There on the way to the cross, you will see the beauty of my face, of God's love, as my face is struck and spit upon in order to win your salvation. There at the cross, you will see the glorious countenance of God as my face is covered in the blood that takes away your sins, that drowns your iniquities, the blood that streams down from the crown of thorns, pierced into my brow along with the nails pierced into my hands and feet. So come with me to the cross, my formerly blind friend, and feast your eyes upon the face of God as the lips on that face draw their final breath and win your salvation. And likewise, Bartimaeus, if you want to open your eyes and see what it looks like for God to welcome you into his kingdom, then follow me to the tomb and watch as that stone is rolled away as I walk out alive, victorious over death, and you will in fact see what it looks like for God to embrace you. Look at that empty tomb and see in my risen flesh that God now welcomes you into an eternity where no blindness, no sorrow, no suffering, no sin, no sickness, no death will ever be able to touch you again in the image of my empty tomb. See that you are no longer a beggar, that you no longer need to ask for anything again because God freely gives everything to you because you are His Son, covered in my righteousness, covered in the kingdom and the power and the glory of heaven, because I have had mercy on you, because I have done exactly what it is that I came into this world to do for you, because I did exactly what it is that God promised the Son of David would do, because I earned salvation for you and freely gave it to you out of my own love. And now, today, just as Jesus spoke those words to Bartimaeus in healing him and in opening his eyes just in time for Bartimaeus to see what Christ would accomplish at the cross, so today Jesus tells us the very same thing. So today Jesus says to you, Look, you blind sinner, recover your sight and see. 
what it is that I've already done for you when I went up to Jerusalem. See what I showed Bartimaeus. See what I've already accomplished for you at the cross and the empty tomb. Open your eyes and see that this demand that you keep all of the Ten Commandments has now been taken away because I have kept them for you. Because I perfectly kept those commandments. I perfectly love God with all my heart. Perfectly love my neighbor as myself. And did this in every waking nanosecond of my life. Always perfectly and purely and wholly preserving the law of God. And when I went to the cross and poured out my blood upon you. That perfect obedience. That perfection. That perfect love of God and neighbor covered your flesh. So that now when God sees you. He claims you as his own child. When I went to the cross and my salvation poured out for you, I opened up your eyes and I opened the eyes of my Father to see you as His very beloved child, to see you as one who has no sins, who is worthy only of eternal life. If you want to see the face of God today, my formerly blind brothers and sisters, then open your eyes and look to the cross and there in my countenance, in my bloody bruised face, you will see it. You will see in the fa- you will see the face of God in the face of the man who took the anger, the pride, the greed that you tried to stop me from taking away from you. You will see the face of God in that man's face dying and making your sins exist no more. And if you want to see what eternal life looks like, then do what Bartimaeus did. Open your healed and forgiven eyes and look at my empty tomb because there you will see all of the salvation that you couldn't earn is now yours through my victory over the grave. There you will see that when I opened my grave, I buried all of your unworthiness in a tomb that will never be opened. So the only thing that remains on your flesh, the only, the only thing that now covers you is not your affliction, It's not your sin, but rather it is my worthiness, my love, my grace, my word swearing to you that God now claims you as his own beloved child. And that every ounce, every jewel, every atom of glory in his kingdom is now yours forever. Because I am the God who has come into this world to show His face to the blind sinners, to open their eyes and to bless them to see the face of the God who saves us by His grace, by His mercy, and by His love. Amen.